Well, welcome back. The top field has rebooted and uh, now we're ready to start configuring these taps we've just installed and we're going to have a look at Smart EPG first. So if you press the guide button you'll see a view like this. We're going to change this default view later but uh, first of all we're going to do the setup of the tap itself. So press the menu button and you'll see this list. Now there's a lot of things to set here but luckily the defaults are pretty close so I'll just highlight the ones that need to be changed. So we're going to start by making sure that it's going to see the full channel list. So on this view here, we're highlighted on menu item 1. So we just press OK now and it'll bring up the list of all the channels that are available. Now you'll see that all the channels are set to ignore. And we want to change that so that all the channels are uh, considered when the EPG does a scan. So at the bottom of the screen you can see a zero button for all channels ignore, one for all channels scan and so on. Uh, we want to press the one button and that will change it to all channels to be scanned. So we just press the one button on your, on your remote and you can see they've all changed now. So we'll just have a look down the list and see that they're all highlighted. So that's the way we want that particular menu setting to be configured. Incidentally, in this video, I'm just giving you all the settings that I've found to work for me. Uh, I'm not saying that there aren't other ways of doing it, so feel free to try different things, but uh, probably a good idea just to use these settings as a starting point. Uh, for instance, uh, I always do my start scan uh, for the EPG uh, scanning routine to run to be at 1am. Um, you might find you'd like something different, so try whatever you like there, but just during that period of time when it's scanning you really can't do anything because it's running through all the channels and doing searches so one o'clock sounds like a good time to do it for me. Um, I always have my top field shut down after it's done that scan at one o'clock so it gets a reboot once a day that's just a personal preference again. Uh, scan now is just if you want to force a scan at, the, at any particular time. Um, I'm not really going to comment too much on these you can just see the settings that I've put in uh, API is the scan mode. I always like it to scan the ABC. The ABC seems to be the most reliable of all the channels as far as its EPG and its time clock so I use that one. Um, I scan an uh, interval of one day and I retain the old EPG data for one day as well so I'll just change that one to one day. Um, a lot of these don't really matter too much, but I'm just going to comment on them as we go through. The prime is referring to prime time viewing. I'm going to tell the top field that prime time starts at 7.30 p.m. Now, I don't really use this function, but um, it's there if you wish to read up on it. Uh, this is just the default button to bring up the EPG, which is the guide button. And then you can define other buttons to do various views if you like. Uh, the red symbol there means that they're not configured in my case. We keep going further down. Uh, the info box that I use is the actual display of the information on screen. I use Smart EPG Pilot. I'm not too sure what the other ones look like but you'll see a bit later what mine looks like. Uh, this is your default pre-padding for timers. Uh, so if you don't set any other padding settings pre and post, it'll use these. Uh, I tend to use, I set this at zero for pre-padding and uh, I think five for post-padding is reasonable. But usually in my searches, I'll have a totally different set of padding settings so that you can account for the stations who really muck around with the uh, EPG or the timing of their program such that it's nothing like the EPG. So the search width is how far into the future uh, the EPG scan is going to run. I like to set mine for five days so it'll search the upcoming five days of EPG and create timers for those five days. Uh, combining double episodes, we may discuss that in a bit more detail later. I allow that on any timer. It helps a lot when you've got consecutive recordings. File name, you can have lots of uh, additional information built into the file name when it saves, but I just put the name, that's usually good enough for me. Uh, you can have more details if you need them. Next one we'll see will be 
if there's any lost events or conflicts, um, it'll pop up and show you the timer menu so that you can uh, investigate what's going on there. That's something a little bit more advanced, but um, I won't cover it right now. I don't use event recommendations. I'm in Queensland, so we don't have to worry about uh, summertime or daylight saving time. I have the live EPG set to yes. Uh, create M timers I have set to no. I don't use M timers at all. Uh, this is not relevant to us. Uh, I don't like showing the clock. Got plenty of clocks around the house. Add mode doesn't really apply to Australia either, so you turn that off. Uh, GUI look and feel. We're going to come back to this menu. There's a whole sub menu of settings, so just uh, come back to that a little bit later. Uh, these are just utilities you can use to create backups, but you can do auto backups, so I have that set to yes. Again, these are little utility programs. TG, TGD channel, I have channel number, not sure what that does, and that's where you can stop um, if you wish to stop the tap. So now we'll just go back up to that uh, menu 32, GUI look and feel, and do some settings in there. Just press OK when you get to that one. Now the logo style uh, that we're using, or I'm using anyway, is called 3PG. So we've got to press OK on this button here. And then um, it's on trans black at the moment. You've got to press OK again and it'll change to 3PG style of logos. So then you just press exit to get back out of there. And now you can see it's changed. Now the double click pass through key is on. Channel sorting I have by name. The channel name in the guide, yes. Uh, the legend for all views, yes. Display old events, I have one. Event on top, I have yes. Progress bar, yeah, single colours, fine by me. Coloured timer list, I have no. Endless scrolling, yes, I like to scroll right through the menus and back to the top. Uh, end time in timer list, I have off, uh, sorry, yes. Information type, 14 lines, that should be on actually. And all of these other ones are small logos, logo types. Time out 3 seconds. Info with new recordings, yes. I'm not sure what that one does. Warning for end timers, I don't, sure, I don't use that one. And you can see the final couple of settings here in regard to the clock which we don't show anyway this shows the position position on the screen if you're using it so we nearly finished this sorry i've gone very quickly through it you might have to rewind the video and just have a closer look time of view for conflict resolution yes you should have that on and i believe that's the last one current events in the events list no already seen change that to off that should be so now we return out of the uh, GUI look and feel menu back to the main Smart EPG menu and then exit again because we're finished and we're back to live TV. So as you can see here the TV is tuned or the top field is tuned to SBS and the EPG data for SBS is being shown. Um, and that's because it has been tuned to SBS and it's had a chance to pick it up from the transmission. But the other stations are all still blank. So 10 HD and etc. etc. They're all uh, showing blank EPGs. Now this is not anything to worry about at this stage. Um, it just hasn't had a chance to pick up any of that data. So that's what we're going to do next is to give it a chance to look at each of the channels. And uh, as it does that, it will pick up the data we, we're looking for to put into the EPG. So back to SBS, we can see there we have it again. I'm just going to change channels and you'll see uh, the information at the bottom will initially be blank, but then it'll pop in. And that's the process of, I believe that's what's happening. It's picking up that information from the uh, broadcast signal. So that one's blank, but there it is. It's put something in there. Uh, we'll see this happen for each of the channels as we go through. 7, 2, it just takes a few seconds to find it. Uh, but all the channel 7 ones should be complete now. 
and it just does it on the for each network as we go through. So we'll just speed up the video a little bit here. So I'm just surfing through all the remaining channels and it's finding the EPG data as we go through. I think we're nearly finished. Probably that's the last one, I think. And ABC. Okay, so now it's done. Now, um, what's happening here is that Smart EPG has realized it's never done a scan before and it's asking can it start to do a scan. I've said OK to that. So this is what will happen normally at 1am in the morning uh, and you'll see that it's going to cycle through every channel or every one of the five bouquets anyway and um, do a search based on what it sees there. Now of course at the moment I don't have any searches defined so um, it's not going to find anything but it's it's the first time it's ever done this so it's probably building up um, some databases for future uh, scans and uh, this will just take a few minutes so I'll speed this up until it's finished. So if you just bear with us for a few more seconds uh, this will be all over and we'll be able to see what it's actually produced out of the scanning process. So I think that's the last of the channels to be scanned and you'll see the message on top of the screen it's actually creating the EPG database now with a big long file name uh, these are all be stored stored on the top field and used by the smart EPG program so the first scan of smart EPG is just finishing up um, next time we run this scan it will be with some real searches in place and we'll then see how it actually creates all of its timers and how we manage those timers. So that's all for this video. Um, when we come back we'll do the one video I suppose which makes it all worthwhile where we actually get some use out of this um, Smart EPG and I think you'll find it's pretty handy.